Kyle here. I am the web admin and just general tech guy for the Back to Basics show. And today I'm just taking the dogs out on a little day hike. I have some ballast uh, thrown in my pack here, just a little bit extra weight. Um, I probably only got about 30 pounds or so. Uh, it's just a nice little warm up. Uh, got the dogs here. They're having a good old time. And uh, this is pretty much what I want to talk about today. It's backpacking and uh, what some of its benefits are to you know people that are interested in the uh, in prepping or in you know some of this sustainable uh, living. There's some really good stuff that you can get from this. Today's day hike is at kind of an intersection since uh, my friends and I just got done hiking the Buffalo River Trail in uh, in Arkansas, and that was just gorgeous out there. It's the middle of April, um, and today we're going to be expecting you know the weather forecast anyway. Uh, they're expecting some possible tornadoes uh, today and tomorrow, and right now, even though you can't feel it, I can tell you about it. It's it's pretty warm and muggy out here, which is usually the kind of weather that precedes these sort of things. Uh, we get this uh, this warm, moist air kind of trapped down below, really cool high air. And uh, the temperature inversion, I guess, is what uh, kind of creates the tornadoes. But uh, So it's good timing here to talk about this, because I think that backpacking is one of the... For me, it's kind of the central skill for any of uh, my prepping, whatever. Uh, it's kind of how mostly I mentally prepare for any uh, difficult situations, uh, especially things that have to do with the outside environment. I'd like to preface my arguments today by just emphasizing what kind of sedentary, uh, pampered kind of lifestyle I have. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a web developer, I work indoors, there's always air conditioning, there's always heating. Uh, I always have lots of electricity, internet connection. Uh, so I do have, you know, a lot of the nice amenities that our man-made systems have produced. And it's possibly, be, you know, partly because of this and my uh, long time in education, I have a, a master's degree, so I've spent a lot of time on my butt uh, in air-conditioned rooms. And, yeah, it might be because of that that I, I love getting out so much. So let's take a look at some of the initial, just uh, the easy benefits, the ones that are pretty easy to tell. First off, uh, backpacking is going to make at least your lower body pretty strong. Um, I, I haven't really done many other exercises that uh, make my legs just this tough. Um, I like rollerblading, I like some other things. I've, you know, I've done some jogging in the past even though I was rubbish at it. Um, but carrying a heavy load on my back and stumbling through difficult terrain, it's, uh, it's quite a workout. And uh, it's a, quite a muscle builder. It also helps build uh, balance since as your muscles start to fatigue, balance becomes more and more important. Especially if you got two dogs straining at the leash, <laughs> trying to pull you off a mountain. I also like to do some rock climbing when I can get it. Uh, it's a bit difficult nowadays since there's so much work to do, but uh, yeah, if you want to talk about building strength, especially the upper body, and uh, building some calluses, building some balance, rock climbing is fantastic. Now really, that's about as far as the uh, the physical boosts go. Whoa! The dogs just walked over a pretty big fat snake, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's just a, uh, a water snake, but um, yeah, I'm gonna let it just cross the path, and then I'll, I'll wait a second, and then we'll go across. Which brings me to one of the, the end points, actually, I was gonna discuss. Uh, one of the benefits about uh, going out hiking is you kind of learn how to deal with wild animals, or at least you kind of get accustomed to running into them. Um, so here we go, case in point.
Let's take a look at some of the benefits that aren't quite as quantifiable, and these are pretty much just going to be mental. Um, uh, the first one that kind of pops to my mind is uh, just the ability to know a bit more about your own body, like what you can take. Um, you can feel when uh, it's time to hang back and maybe take it easy for a little bit because you're about to give out. Maybe you've just been pushing things too hard. Uh, maybe it's time to push through a, a wall or something and just keep on going. Probably one of the largest benefits is one that you can take into uh, just everyday life, really. Uh, this really applies to disaster situations for me. Or, you know, I've never really been in a, you know, a true disaster or anything, but um, uh, let's just take times of loss of service, like you lose power for a couple weeks. Uh, you know, in the middle of winter, um, you just lose some service like that. And this one kind of helps me deal with these things. When I'm out in the back country, um, you can be afraid of all kinds of stuff. Because, frankly, there's a lot to be afraid of out here. They're dangerous animals. <laughs> there, there are dangerous situations. There's, I mean, heck, so, some of the things that, uh, you know, you really kind of should be afraid of. Uh, just, heck, gravity. You're walking along the edge of a cliff uh, with a 50-pound pack on your back and that pack suddenly decides to want to pull you off, that's a pretty scary situation, and that's, that's totally normal. Um, gosh, you have just the wilderness itself, the idea of getting lost, not being able to find your way out. Um, again, gravity, you could have chunks of tree fall on you when you're in your tent, you could have floods come up and wash you away, and all this stuff, I mean, this is really serious stuff. Uh, one of the trails that we were thinking of going on this last time, um, a couple of years ago, I think it was 20 people were washed out uh, in the middle of the night in their campsite. Not even enough time to open their tents or anything. All I guess all 20 were killed, uh, just taken right out of the campsite by a flash flood. Uh, so it can be pretty serious business. Um, so yeah, there's yeah there's physical injury danger if you're out in the middle of nowhere by yourself and you sprain your ankle. That could be enough to get you killed. So I've already kind of mentioned flash floods, but there are all kinds of weather events that can uh, really mess with you while you're out there. It could just be too hot out, too hot and muggy. Uh, you can't regulate your own body temperature. Um, you know, it, it could be a lot of rain, it could be lightning, all kinds of things. Uh, even forest fires. Uh, you have to kind of watch during certain parts of the season. Um, but the thing that kind of happens is that, at least for me, I feel like I've traded either fear or ignorance of those things in for some kind of respect. I've gone in with ignorance sometimes and I've had something kind of kick my butt a little bit and so I've come away with respect instead realizing that these these forces out there they are really strong. They're way more powerful than me. They're more powerful than a lot of our human systems uh, but that instead of just being outright scared of them and avoiding them uh, as well, it's, uh, it's learning how to deal with those things, realizing that there is the potential for some kind of deadly danger, and then just simply being ready for it. And if I can't have some kind of gear in my pack that, uh, that particularly addresses a certain thing, uh, it's the mental flexibility to be able to go in and address that thing. And that one's really important. To me, this respect kind of leads to a, a sort of resignation, just a realization that I'm pretty small in a big scary world and that I can still make my way through it, that I have what it takes to keep myself alive and uh, yeah, not just that, but thrive while I'm out here and have a good time. One added benefit that comes out of that sort of thing where, uh, say you've just made it through something really difficult, you kind of get this, uh, even if it isn't that bad, it was just a difficult hike, you still come back with this kind of survival mentality. Uh, it brings some comfort to know that you made it uh, out on a difficult trail with a lot of weight on your back and, uh, you know, maybe there are wild animals and uh, some, some bad weather. and 
you did just fine. And that is a real confidence booster. Of course, one of the factors that isn't immediately obvious, and this probably depends on the kind of person you are, uh, but there is a certain amount of mental peace to be found out in the middle of nothing. Uh, even though there, you know, there may be danger around, it may be uncomfortable, uh, there are no ringing cell phones, there's no... There's just really nothing clamoring for your time beyond survival. And that can be kind of nice. This is a factor that a lot of preppers and people that are at least leaning in that direction that, you know, maybe they'd like to make some kind of small preparations for uh, local disasters, like say a tornado rips through, or there's some kind of loss of service, there's an ice storm, uh, that kind of thing. These are all things that we've seen in, in recent years, or, you know, maybe even recent months, um, where power gets shut down or something. Uh, what backpacking does for me is it allows me to kind of organize or reorganize my hierarchy of needs and to put things into a proper place. If I'm in my house where I have, um, I have air conditioning, I have heating, I have food in the fridge, everything is just comfortable and all my needs are being met by basically external systems that I just, you know, kind of pay for if I do my job you really don't get a chance to make a hierarchy of needs like that. Uh, maybe the most pressing thing on your mind is, uh, you know, what, what color clothing you might buy. Things that really don't fall, they fall so low in the hierarchy of needs that they, they're barely a blip on the radar. But when you're out here, or when you're really out deep in the bush, and you're having to basically juggle with, okay, do I want air right now or do I want water? Um, that is a really big deal. And what it does is it puts everything else into a proper perspective. For example, uh, if one of your light bulbs goes out, that's not an issue. You're, if you're thinking about the hierarchy of needs from uh, when you were kind of out in the, the thick of things, it's, it's just not important at all. And if something really nasty does happen, where you, for example, lose uh, your services for a while, maybe you don't have electricity so you can't heat your house, or you lose natural gas, you can't heat your house, or you can't cool it, then if you're used to having to deal with this, the greater environment, something that's a little bigger than your house, a little bigger than our man-made systems, and something that's really just waiting right outside the window, or right outside the door all the time, uh, then you know how to deal with things and to make your house, make your family, make everything work despite uh, some kind of loss. Once you've seen a few things, you've had some difficulties out in the back country or, I mean, heck, around your house, whatever, those kind of things, they, they build up and they, they give you the ability to foresee certain uh, difficulties and to prepare for them, which is really what the uh, the prepper, the uh, disaster preparedness kind of mindset is all about. It's about looking forward to uh, things that might possibly happen and having, you know, if it isn't equipment, if it isn't gear that is, you know, specifically set up to take care of some kind of problem, then at least you have the mindset to be able to deal with that thing or just to do without it. Another necessary benefit that comes along with all this is just the, uh, the jury rigging, the problem solving aspect of all of it. Uh, say you weren't expecting rain, you didn't bring something to address that issue, then you might have to use some materials at hand to make yourself something to, uh, to give yourself a little bit of shelter. You might have to find ways to um, reflect your body heat back if it turns a little colder than you expected. Uh, it could just be as simple as you want to hang some stuff up to dry, so you have to figure out how to rig a little something between some trees. Uh, they're all little challenges that all add up to just the, the basic ability to troubleshoot and problem solve, uh, even when there isn't much to work with. And one of the most Im immediately noticeable uh, benefits of going out hiking and stuff is that you really appreciate all of the systems that you do have back at the house. Uh, once you get back to your bed, uh, it, it never feels better. You know, maybe you're 
thinking about switching out to a new mattress because you're, you know, hurting your back or something. Yeah, not after sleeping bags. <laughs> it, uh, it makes air conditioning that much more wonderful, heating that much more wonderful. Uh, easy access to food, that's just great. Oh, I just felt the shift in the wind. Feels like the cold front might be starting to kick in here. It, it wasn't a very solid cold front like I felt out in Arkansas, but uh, I'm guessing the rain is pretty soon to follow here. Uh, we'll see. I have, I have come prepared, as I've been talking about. I do have a, a pack cover and uh, I have a nice cover for the, the camera here to keep it from getting soaked. Uh, so I'll be alright. In addition to the physical and mental uh, sort of benefits of hiking and doing some of these outdoor activities, there's another really good one and that is uh, the social benefits. Um, if you are, for example, a rock climber, then you are very dependent upon at least one other person. If you're, if you're the one that's actually doing the scaling, you're dependent on one guy down on the ground to keep you from dying if you should come off the wall. He's going to be the one that's going to uh, catch you with his belay system, or he's going to you know, be in place if you're bouldering to hit your shoulders, keep your head from hitting the ground. And so you're depending on people in life and death situations. This isn't just about you know, who's at a, a party and, you know, can you stand to talk to someone? This is, this is really about survival and about communal survival. Um, in backpacking, of course, same thing. Uh, you can go out by yourself, which is a little dangerous. Um, you know, I've definitely done it, but uh, you, you really have to watch your own back out there. If you're heading out with a, a group or just a buddy, then you have to watch each other's backs. You have to make sure that uh, you know, no one's getting injured, no one's getting any, uh, any blisters on the feet or whatever that can't be dealt with. Uh, you're sharing equipment if it's needed, sharing food, uh, sharing the workload. I draw on all of these backpacking experiences and, you know, the gear, the techniques. This is really the core of my little preparations if, you know, something bad should happen. Um, for example, you know, a loss of any of the services that I just mentioned, electricity, gas, um, if we should lose gasoline for vehicles or whatever, then I'm coming at it from a mindset of I can still make things happen anyway. You know, maybe I can't do things the way that I had before. Maybe I can't still be a web developer or something, but I can still be a worker. I can still be useful and I can, I can just take care of business. And that is a really invaluable thing. Be sure to subscribe to the Back to Basics channel on YouTube to make sure that you get the latest updates on uh, tutorials, little adventure videos. Uh, we're gonna be discussing gardening and uh, alternative energy sources, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, so make sure you check us out there. And uh, you can follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and uh, mostly just make sure you go to the backtobasicsshow.com website, and that's where we'll have info on the, uh, the latest show, we'll have the location and date, and uh, we'll have info on all the, the vendors and services that will be out there, and uh, neat little sessions for you to take part in. All right. See you there.